tonight out of St. Luke's Gospel, beginning with the 24th chapter and the 13th verse. And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about、uh, three score furlong. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed、uh, together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said to them, What manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, Answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to the Be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that he had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said, He was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even as the women had said, but him they saw not. Then said he unto them, O fools, slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them all the scriptures. The things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village where they went. And he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass as they sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave to them. And their eyes were opened. And they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to the other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us by the way, and while he opened unto us the scripture? Let us bow our heads now in prayer. Most holy God, we approach thee in the name of Jesus, thy Son.、Yes. And we believe that. We are in the presence of you now, as by faith we come to your great altar, where his blood is there to speaking for us on our behalf. And we are indeed a needy people, Lord. We're needy of thee. And we're, we're asking for thy grace. And as we see the prophecies fulfilled today, that the The church, of how we have become rich in the things of the world and think we have need of nothing. And he said we were naked, blind, miserable, and blind and didn't know it. And Father, we ask for grace then that you'll open our eyes to the understanding、uh, of thy word, that we might understand the hour we're living, that we might prepare ourselves for his appearing as we truly believe it's at hand. So now we would ask that you would give to us tonight the desires of our heart according to your riches and glory, forgiving our sins, Lord. We, we pray that you'll not look at our misunderstandings and our, our ignorance concerning the things that we should know, that you'll forgive us for that. And remember us as just human beings, Father, we're subject to all kinds of mistakes and troubles. Thou art the infinite, infallible,、uh, everlasting God. We pray that you will be merciful to us and grant unto us the blessings that we ask for. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated. 
Now, we are grateful again tonight for the opportunity to be here in, the, in this auditorium and to have this grand time to fellowship again around the things of God. I'm sorry to have kept you last night uh, against my promise that I told you we would be out each evening at, at between 9 and 9.30. And I, I, I missed it last evening, and I, I'm sorry I did that. Now, uh, tonight I'll try to redeem that with you, because I know many of you work, and you have to go to work, and you, you people, you women have to get your husbands off to work and so forth, and many of you work, and it's hard. And uh, I think that today we've had much preaching, many fine ministers, able ministers that has brought us the word, your pastors and, and evangelists and so forth that comes to the city. But I think the main thing that I'm trying to, uh, to try to bring to you is the, the reality of the presence of Christ, that, that you might see him and know that it's him by his identified promise for the day. Now, last evening we tried to give a little outline, and tonight we've got another little outline, and maybe tomorrow night, then the Lord willing, Saturday night, because you won't have to get up so early Sunday morning, uh, I want to try to bring the message in a, in a way that it would be un more understanding to the pastors and those who can to lay it back in the scriptures. And then Sunday afternoon, uh, we want to have a, a prayer line and pray for the sick by laying the hands upon the sick and praying for them and that matter. And we found that successfully. Those who cannot reach up by faith and just believe Him and accept it. My way of thinking it, that it would be better if we could just raise up and accept it. Here in South Africa, when I was in a meeting there at Durban where some nearly 200,000 people, I guess, had gathered at the Durban racetrack, there was a uh, uh, we bring, we only had five people on the platform. And when the fifth person was healed at the platform, and it was asked the natives out there where they were just laying, oh my, well that's one of the biggest racetracks in the world. It's lots bigger than Churchill Downs at Louisville. And the English all go there for their winter sports of racing. And we had the racetrack and it was packed all the way full and all the way across the track and I was over on the other side in a, a building. Sidney Smith, the mayor of Durban, taking me out there that day to the race course. And I saw with one congregational prayer after those ladies, some of them didn't know which is right and left hand. And I saw them after they seen and I explained. I had 15 different interpreters. When you say one sentence, you have to wait till 15 different men say it. You know how difficult that was for the tribes. And then after that was over and explained to them in a little manner of what Jesus was, I said, many of you here are tagged as Christians, still packing an idol in their hand. And I asked one, I said to Mr. Smith, I said, what's that lady packing that idol for? And as you said, that was a Christian tag. He said, it is. I said, yeah, he's a Zulu, so I can speak his language, just asked him. And so he just did it for my benefit. So I, we pulled up close to him and I called him Thomas. He said, this is saying he ain't calls his kind of doubter. And I said, Thomas, uh, uh, are you a Christian? And, yes, he, he believed in it. And I said, well, what do you got that idol in your hand for? Well, it, it, it was God too. And his, his father packed this idol. And when the lion got after him, he had to sprinkle with blood and and he built up a little fire to say the prayer the witch doctor told him, and it scared the lion away. Well, I said, I am a, uh, the word yakta, yakta means a hunter, leo, leo yakta, that's hunting lions. I said, I'm a, a lion hunter. And it was not the prayer or the scared the lion away, it was the fire. The, the lion's afraid of fire. He said, well, he believed a moya. A moya means it's an unseen force like God or like the wind. See, a Moya is something he can. He believed a Moya, but if Moya failed, this would. See, now that was the strength of Christianity to him. And I told him, I said, now, see, whatever the missionary told you about Christ is right. See, but I said, there is. See, he never told you all. He tried to tell you that his great powers had ceased when he died. Back at the cross, we don't know more heaven. He's mistaken there. He's alive. Yeah. And right amongst us. See, just the same as he ever was. And when they see that proof, just like you did last evening, they estimated 25,000 people 
cows who healed at one time. Think of that. And the next day, Mr. Smith called me. And he said, Brother Brad, go to your window. It looks out towards the Indian Ocean in your, your hotel room. And there come seven great big English bands. Oh, my, we haven't got a truck for the whole one-third of what they would hold. This pile full of crutches and carriers that they carried their loved ones out of the jungles. Piled in there. They was on it the day before. And here they are walking behind these trucks. Thousands of them with their hands up saying all things are possible. Only Praise God. Now, if a heathen, a man that don't know which is right or left hand, a, a man that's in that condition can just see that happen one time, or one time read the scripture and explain it to him, what ought we to claim to be spirit filled people? What ought we to do? But the thing of it is, we've been so indoctrinated. So everyone gives his own opinion and, uh, well, it's just different from uh, the people you're meeting. You know, uh, heathen don't all together mean that he has to be illiterate. It's educated heathens, you know, they're the worst of all. <laughs> That's right, when you go to the movement. I'll tell you, they've traveled the world, been several times around the world. But you know where the need missionaries is worse than ever? USA, right here. Here is the field for the missionary. That's right. Let some of them people come over go on the right, left hand, and teach these people what God is. They got so much intellectuals that they've lost the whole side of the whole thing. Yes, they try to explain it and try to, to work it out and try to figure it out. The native don't try to figure out nothing. He just simply believes. And that's what you have to do to get right to God and just believe. You can't figure God out. What of Moses when he seen that bush not burning up? Now, Moses was a chemist. And Moses was taught in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. But when he saw that bush, it was strange. Well, he never said, I believe I'll go over when the fire goes out. I'll take the leaves off that bush and take it down to the laboratory and find out what it's sprayed with. See, to see why that bush could burn and, and it didn't burn up. That would have been the scientific approach. But what did he do? He took off his shoes and sat on the top. Yeah. God talked back to him, see. When you humble yourself, humble yourself. What if Martha would have said when she heard of Jesus after he sent to come pray for Lazarus and they been dead four days. What if she had run out and said, I thought we was believing something. She had a right to break it, you know, because uh, he failed to come when they called. But you see, she had the right approach. She went to him and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And even now, whatever you ask God, God will give it to you. Oh, that's it. That's the idea. See, she had the right approach. Look at that faith when he struck Jesus. He said, Thy brother shall rise again. She said, Yes, Lord. In the last day of the general resurrection, he arrives. He was a good boy. He said, I am the resurrection. Yeah. 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 He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe us out this. She said, Yea, Lord. I believe that you are that Messiah, the Son of God that was to come into the world. Oh, my. Where have you buried her? I was talking to a woman not long ago before this is standing in. It's a people who claim to believe in divine healing. It's psychic healing, mental healing. Leave mind over matter. And they don't believe that Jesus was divine. And they said that he was a good man, but he was a teacher and a philosopher, but he couldn't be divine. I said, if he wasn't divine, he's the greatest deceiver the world ever had. That's right. You can't make nothing out of him but being divine. She said, if I prove to you by your own Bible he wasn't divine, will you accept it? I said, you can't prove it with the Bible. I'm she said, well, I'll show you. I said, all right. She said, in St. John, the 11th chapter, said the Bible said when Jesus went to the grave of Lazarus, he wept. I said, sure. She said, well, how can he weep being divine? I said, well, you just failed to see what he was. When he went to the grave weeping, he was a man. But when he pulled his little shoulders together and said, Lazarus, come forth. And a man had been dead four days come up out of the grave. That was more than a man. That was God in a man. Right. He was a man when he came out off the mountain and was hungry and looked for food on a tree. He cursed the tree because it had no food. He was a man when he was hungry. But when he took five biscuits and two fish and fed five thousand, taking up seven basketfuls, that was more than a man. That was God in a man. And God only represents himself in man. He chose man. When he's laying out on that boat that night where virtue went out of him all day preaching and people pulling at him and deserting and so forth. 
and the storm up on the sea, I guess 10,000 devils swore they'd drowned him that night. When he's laying back there asleep on the back of the boat and uh, flopping around like a bottle stopper out there on the a mighty sea somewhere, he was a man when he was tired laying there sleeping. That's right. But when he was once around, when he's put on a rail of the boat, looked up and said, Peace, be still. That was more than a man. That was God in a He was a man when he died on the cross, crying for mercy. He was a man, but when he broke the seals of death, hell, and the grave, and rose up on the third day, he proved he was more than a man. He was God in a man. No wonder ever a man that's ever mounted anything believed that. All poets and everything that's ever mounted anything believed that. That's right. He was more than a man. He was God. Now, God, in his own son, built a body that he lived in tabernacle, changed his strength. Just think, Jehovah lay in a manger over a manure pile in a barn, crying like a little baby. Those little baby hands, little Jehovah, coming down and bathing himself in, a, in that barn. Look at uh, uh, Jehovah, I'm playing as a teenage boy. Look at Jehovah building in a carpenter shop. Jehovah hanging on the cross. Then when he rose up, he proved he was Jehovah. That's right. God in Christ reconciling the world to himself. He was more than a philosopher. He was more than a prophet. He was Emmanuel. Now, tonight, we're going to approach this, a subject here while well, we just read the scriptures. And we're going to take this for a text. And when their eyes were open, they knew him. Now, our scene starts off at a beautiful time or setting. It's about this time of year. It was an uh, Easter, and it was the first fine Easter, and Jesus was back from the dead. In the springtime of Easter, living among the people again. And many who loved him didn't know it. And that's the same as it is today. There's many people that love him that really can't believe that he's with us now. They, they just can't seem to comprehend it. They, yes, many of them in that day who walked and talked with him could not uh, comprehend that he was back from the dead, though they had witnesses and been to the tomb and so forth, and uh, knew that he was up from the dead, but still they just couldn't believe it. Why? I wonder why. See, that's quite unusual. It's too unusual. And it's usually in the unusual things that God is in. It's the unusual things that makes Him God. See? That's what makes Him what He is, is the things He does so unusual. Now, it was unusual when Joseph, before the birth, when he found Mary, his lovely little sweetheart that he was engaged to, to be married. He uh, found her, she was to be mother without uh, being married. So she no doubt had told him of the visit of, of Gabriel, the angel. And Joseph was a just man. He was a good man. And he was, uh, he was, he wanted to believe her. I can imagine as he loved her with all his heart to see that young Hebrew maid and, and looked into her eyes and, and when she'd say, Joseph, dear, the great angel Gabriel visited me and he said I would be overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. And the holy thing that would be born in me would be from me would be called the Son of God. Now, he wanted to believe that. But it, there never been anything happen like that. So it was too unusual. And look, there was a just man, a good man, and the scripture claiming that it would a virgin would conceive and he didn't understand it. See, the scripture that said that Christ would be born that way, still Joseph couldn't understand it because it was too unusual. Now, in them days, they had no prophets. A man was, uh, they hadn't had prophets for hundreds of years. And so God dealt with him in a dream. A dream is a secondary way. The right way is always to the word first. Now, God has a way of proving whether his word is right or not. Were there any in the Old Testament? Aaron had the twelve stones, the birth stones, on his breastplate here, and they hung it on the post in the temple. If a prophet prophesied or a dreamer told a dream, they take them down to this what is called as a minister of the Lord, the year of abundance. 
And so this, when this dreamer told his dream, or the prophet told his prophecy, and supernatural lights didn't flash over that to make the year of the thunder, then I don't care how real it sounds, it was wrong. The year of thunder had to witness it was right. Well, that now the Aaronic priesthood is done away with in the old year of the thunder. But God still has a year of the thunder, and that's the word. If, if a prophet prophesies or a dreamer dreams a dream that is contrary to that word, I don't care how real it sounds, forget it. That's God's true thunder. That's it. And that has to answer back to be true. And that's God interpreting his own word. So God had no uh, prophets in the land of that day, so God spoke to Joseph in the secondary way, showing that if there isn't anything present that should bring it forth, God can work through anything, anything that he's promised. See, he can work a dream. If there was no prophet, then he could work a dream. So no matter what our little gifts are, God can speak to us in any way he wants to. But it has to be with the Word. See, it has to be according to the Word. Now we find out that his dream was according to the Word because Isaiah said, A virgin shall conceive. And it was his dream was according to the Word. And this was the one that had conceived. And then when the, the Spirit of the Lord, the angel of the Lord, appeared to him in this dream and said, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take into thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Well, that settled it then. He was a just man. He wanted to believe it. He wanted to believe it, but it was so unusual to him. And if a man wants to believe anything and, and the truth is before him, God will make some way to vindicate that the truth is the truth. God's obligated to do it. Because that's what he's saving for it, is those who are ordained alive. Now we find that that unusual thing was, uh, was a thing that, that they couldn't get. And this resurrection was unusual. They, and yet, if they would have noticed it, it was his promised word. He had told them, said, the Son of Man goes up to Jerusalem, and he'll suffer many things on the Gentiles. Be delivered into their hands, and be crucified, be buried, and will rise the third day. See, he said also, as in Jonah, uh, laid in the belly of the whale three days and nights, so must the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and nights. David, one of their prophets, prophesied, said, I'll not leave his soul in hell, neither will I suffer my holy one to see corruption. See? And all the prophets spoke of him, and it looked like that these disciples, it, it looked like they would have they would have recognized and should have known this, but you see, it was with help from them. And uh, the promised word to them, and yet they didn't recognize it. See, it was fulfilled exactly what he said would happen, what the Old Testament said would happen. It was perfectly fulfilled, and yet they didn't understand it. Notice, as they went now, two of them, Cleopas and his friend, was on the road to Emmaus. And um, it was Sunday morning. So they was on their road over there talking, and it was going along the road real sad. My, they were really let down, and something looked like it failed. And God lets things happen like that. He does that purposely, just to, just to test you. Now, let me get this before you straight, so that you'll understand that every son that comes to God's got to be child trained. He's got to be tested. Amen. Every son. If you're never tested, you're not a son. And if you can't stand the chastisement of God, then you're illegitimate and not a child of God. You claim God's your father. You say, oh, I can't. Well, that just shows that God's not your father. You would, uh, you would get it. Now notice this testing. God tests every one of his children. All that come to him must first be tested, tried, proved. Look at him when he was here on earth. One day he looked around, great crowds of people was with him. Oh, when he first started out, he was real well loved. All the churches opened their doors. This young rabbi, well, no doubt, watch the great prophet raised up among us. He's healing our sick. Why well, he comes in these healing services, he does great things. That was fine. But one day there was too many following him. See, that was a sign to attract the attention of the people. Now a voice has to follow that sign. That was his doctrine. Notice. But when the voice came, oh, that was different. My. They, they crucified him because he made himself equal with God. 
when he's healing the sick and performing the miracles and discerning the thoughts in our heart, that was wonderful. But when he said, I and my Father are one, oh my, that was too much for him. They couldn't take that. See, uh, they, that was too much. He makes himself God. So he, he tries to be equal with God. Well, he was, he was the Son of God. And he said, you call them who the word came to, your law says that, that the word came to the prophets and you call them gods. And if you could call a prophet God, how can you condemn me when I say I'm the son of God? Search the scriptures. They're the one who tells you what I'm supposed to do. And if I don't do according to what the word says I'm to do, then don't believe me. But if I do the works of my father, which is the word, then, then believe the works that I do. Still they could not do it. So Jesus said one day, now watch, he don't explain things. He just says it. Notice, he said, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Could you imagine what a fine intellectual bunch of people, a bunch of doctors standing out there and rabbis, well-trained, and uh, highly educated people thought when he said that? Well, I can imagine the doctor looked over and said, the minister, he looked at, uh-uh, uh-uh, see, that, that brought it out right there. Now, he never explained that. He never explained it. He didn't have to. He didn't have to explain it. Well, they said, well, if, well he'll make us, he wants us to be human vampires, drink human blood and eat human flesh. He never said how it would be done. He just said, except you do it. And then that outside crowd, thousands said, oh, uh, there he is. See, they all thought it would come out after a while. See, they were looking for it to come out. And he's seen that it did come out. They were parasites in the first place. So they walked with him no more. So it turned out he had 70 with him. So he said to that 70, he said, what will you say when you see the Son of Man ascending up into heaven from whence he came? Now, he never explained it. They looked at one another and said, what? The Son of Man ascending up from where he come from. Well, we know his mother. We know his brothers, his sisters. We see the manger he was laid in when he was born. We see the cradle he was rocked in. Why well, he's come from Nazareth. Coming from up there, this is a hard scene. And they didn't walk with him no more. Okay? Now, all the time, these disciples stood right there. They didn't know it either. But they believed it. They couldn't explain it. He never explained it, but see, they were ordained to lie. Amen. They couldn't explain it, but they said there, so he turned and said, I've chose twelve of you and one to them. He said, Do you want to go also? And there's where Peter made those memorial words. Lord, we are persuaded that you have a word of life alone. Where would we go to? That was it, see. See, he didn't explain it. He said that so that they would turn down. See? Faith don't ask, don't reason, it searches the scripture for it. Amen. If they had searched the scripture, there would have been proven who he was. But he shook them all. Like that, but saying things and never explain it. And in the yards there, even when they put this uh, rag over his face, and some hit him and smacked him and said, If, if you be a prophet, tell us who hit you now, and, and we'll, we'll believe you. Same thing, same old devil that, and it was up there all, when he was attempted, when he first started into his ministry, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these storms to be turned to bread. Same one of them priests and rabbis up there said, If you are the Christ, come down off the cross and prove it to us. See, he could have done it. He knew who hit him, but he don't clown for nobody. He was a word. And he's still a word. Always was a word, and he remains a word. Look back, they could have seen that, but they didn't. They were, notice on the road over, they were, one, one instant here, I want you to pay close attention. They were talking about him when he appeared to them. Now that's where he comes, is when you're talking about him. The trouble today, we talk about so many other things besides him. We always talk about what we got to do in some business deal or abortion's got to be done or this kind of detergent you ought to use when you are to be giving him praise and glory. That's where our treasures is, there our heart is also. They should have recognized him, but they never. And so is it today. Yet the scripture said it, see? He, he revealed to them the scripture promises concerning himself for that age. Remember, he began with the beginning. He said, 
Oh, fools and slow of heart. He explained to them the scriptures, and after the scriptures that have been preached to them, yet they can recognize it. Now, that isn't a, a modern congregation, I don't know. They, the scriptures explained to them, and still they didn't get it. They walked around on plain to be his disciples. Still they never recognized him. After he had done, told them the scripture for that age. Where God had allowed it. He said, don't you know that Christ should have suffered these things and entered into his glory and raised again? You sh they should have known. They said, no, you're not. All the prophets said about Christ. And he began back there and explained the whole thing down to them. And laid it down to them. And still they never recognized him. After laying the scripture out, this is perfect as it could be. And then walk and I are supposed to be his disciples. Uh, oh, is that so? Is that so? And yet he was that scripture fulfilled standing. And still they didn't get it. Now uh, that's just a very good picture of the day we're living. I don't say that bad. I say that for the truth. That's exactly right. They still didn't recognize him. Though his promises that he had made was fulfilled and he was declaring to him and standing right there in the person. And still, they never recognized him. Notice, the rebuke to them for not recognizing the scripture fulfilled. Now, when they should have known they were disciples, they were a man who had done great sacrifice. They were a man who loved him. They were a man who were trained by him. And yet, after him telling them, he's saying, stand in the company and saying this thing would happen. And here it happened, and still them standing right with him after his resurrection and did not recognize him. Right. You say, could we do a thing like that? It could be possible we could do that. Yeah. That's right. It could certainly be possible. After he promised in his word the thing that he was going to do, and we see it come to pass just as he said, and still we walk over. That's what they had done. He turned right around and told them that he's going to be crucified, raised up the third day, begin then to tell them all about it. And they were sad, said, you know, some of the fellows went out to the grave and some of the women, they said he would raise up from the dead. And all this rumors got stirred around and said, are you just a stranger around here if you don't know these things? He said, what things? It's like he didn't know nothing about it. See, he said that just to throw them off. And he did that purposely, just to try and don't you know he doesn't change his nature? He does the same thing just to, to try and see what you will do. He'll work around somewhere to be thrown before you just to see what you, what you say about it. Your attitude, the way you take, what you think about it. He does that purposely. He doesn't get because that's his unchanging nature. He did it in the old times. Remember Elijah, who even had a soldier to smite him and said, I was a sentry standing with a, to Ahab, and I let the prisoner get away. He didn't do that, but he did it like that so he could let Ahab pronounce his own judgment. Done the same thing in the days of Noah. And he, he can't change his way. And God comes down in a manner, but always you say, well, how would I know what was right and wrong? It's the promised scripture for that hour. It's a scripture that's promised. If they would have got out of their tradition and got away from that tradition that they were in and read the scriptures like he told them to do, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life and they are that that testifies of me. They tell you who I am. And they say, well, now, Rabbi told us this and that. We, we believe what the church says. See? What the church says is what God says. What God says, not what the denomination says, or that you believe God. Now, that's where they failed, because they were so traditioned that they failed to recognize it. Now, we find then, he said, he rebuked them. Watch, fools and slow of heart to understand all the scriptural signs and things should took place of this age. Fools, slow of heart to understand all that the prophets have said that should take place in this day. All these signs that you see. The Bible said these signs are to take place in this day. And you see them taking place. And then are you foolish enough not to believe it? And he was talking that straight to them, and yet they didn't recognize it. Talk about blind. Could we do that? Might be we could. 
if we don't search the scriptures to find what hour we're living in, see what hour, what's, how, it's maybe later than what we think it is. Yet they claim to be his disciples. They claim to believe that they believed every word that he had, he had said. They believed all the Bible. And here was the, here was the Messiah, the God of the Bible, standing there in identification. Identifying the very written word. And they were supposed to be believers of that word. And him referring back and telling them that, you remember what was said about this? And what was said about this? And how Jesus was do this? Or how the, the Christ was do this? And how he, all these things? And yet, they didn't understand it. They didn't know what was it. They know the word as far as the letter was, but they didn't understand the word what it was literally interpreted. That's what it is today. Every man's got his own interpretation. When God condemns the whole thing, God does his own interpretation. God said he'll do a thing when he does it. That's the interpretation thereof. God interprets his own word. There he was standing there in his own interpreter. Hallelujah. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does his own interpretation. Doesn't need any seminary or any ministers, me, you, or no one else to interpret him. He promises it and then he turns around and does it. That's hell. Amen. That interprets itself. So there he stood, the great mighty conqueror of every disease, every sickness, death, hell, grave, and rose up again. What they had believed all along, and there he stood. But they couldn't believe. And him referring back to himself all the time. He said to them, and beginning with Moses and the prophets, he expounded to them all the things that were written concerning himself. And still they didn't get it. Just looked like they just couldn't get it, that's all. Same now? What's the matter today, the reason of it? We're too busy on learning our creeds. We're too busy with our, our denominational programs. We're too busy with soup suppers and lottery in the church. We're too busy with the Ladies Aid Society. We're too busy with our TV programs and all this other nonsense. We're too busy to search the scriptures to find out whether they're right or not. You went down to the restaurant, ordered your bowl of soup and had a spider in it, you'd sue the restaurant. You wouldn't put it in you for nothing with a spider in it. Because you're afraid it might kill this little body. But you'll stick anything down that soul. Just anything, any kind of creed. And never look into it to see whether it's the right thing or not. There's a way that seems right to a man. Search the scriptures. That soul is eternal. So don't just watch what you put in there. See, these creeds and all these things. We just got it like a lodge. Just join the lodge and that settles it. And that's the way people think today. That's the reason they have no time to be studying and meditating, searching things and trying to find out where they're right or not. Let the Christ himself interpret it. And if it comes to pass what he said, then that's the truth. Look and see if it's for this day, as I referred last night. Moses couldn't have come with Noah's message. Neither could Jesus come with, with uh, Moses' message. See, it was so it was lighted for each hour. Now, we couldn't come with Luther's message, neither with Wesley, neither with the Pentecostal message. We're from beyond that. You say, oh, that's something you're... Well, so did the Catholic Church think Luther was making it up. So did Wesley think that... Or the Lutheran think that Wesley was making it up. So did the Wesleys think that the Pentecostals made it up. But the thing of it is, look back in the scriptures. It identifies every age. Amen. And if the things that he's doing now doesn't identify in the promises of God, then leave it alone. But if he does say it'll happen, and it happens, then believe it. It's not man, it's God talking. Doing his own interpretation of his word. Fools and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have said about the Christ. Yet his disciples couldn't believe the written word because they were so busy about, oh well, this, that, about. Yet they claim they believe today that he raised the third day. We speak of it all. We believe that he raised up the third day. He's alive forevermore. And let him just do something. Just like he promised to do. 
Look what they say. Well, it's either a bunch of holy rollers or it's a mental telepathy or it's some kind of a fortune teller or just as it did then. See, it's that same spirit. Now remember, the devil takes his man but not his spirit. The spirit was up on them man back there, religious teachers. Remember, nobody could put a finger against those Pharisees. They had to live right. They'd be stoned to death if it wasn't. They were fine, fine men, highly educated teachers, scholars. And Jesus said, you're a bunch of snakes. You do the works of your father. Why? Why could a man, a God, ever make an interpretation to a man of that type? How could he ever say a thing like that? Because if they refused to see the identified word made manifest. Now today we've come many times, he said, the, the Luther said, when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you have it. That's all. The Nazarenes and Pilgrim Holiness and the Free Methodists said, no, you got to shout to get it. The Pentecostal says you got to speak in tongues to get it. All of it's wrong. I've seen witch doctors speak in tongues and witches. I've seen them jump and shout and see Mohammed run splinters on their fingers and scream louder than ever in Pentecostals in my life. But yet, believing is right. Speaking in tongues is right. And shouting is right. And rejoicing, but that's not it yet. Them Pharisees, some of them say, well, it's a fruit of the Spirit that's right. Them Pharisees had more fruit of the Spirit, what we call fruit of the Spirit, than they could, we could ever produce. Who would you say if I was going to put him on trial now? Say that some young fellow come into the city here the other day and calls himself a prophet. Let's just put him on trial for a minute. And now I'm talking to you people against him. God forgive me for saying such a thing, but just to make a point. Now say this young fellow, he's around out here, he calls himself a prophet. He comes up from Galilee. He does a lot of healing and things, but that don't mean anything. Look up here, we got the pool of Bethesda, the cripple lay there. When that angel comes down and troubles the water, anybody steps in, why would God want something else besides that? See, they failed to recognize the word of that day. The promise is ready to be fulfilled. Now they say, we are judging by the fruit of the Spirit. Now look, who was it stood by, who was it when you were out running around this young man, he put all his time to study the word of Jehovah, your godly old priest. Who was it when Papa and Mama was about to separate? They put the arm around one and one around and they brought them back together. Your godly old priest. Right? Who was it when your father's crops failed and he didn't have no money and you didn't have nothing to eat? Who was it wrote him a check and gave him the money or uh, uh, tied him over that godly old priest? Who was it stood by your mother and daddy when you were born, when you first come in this world, that godly old priest? Who was it pictured up in the arms and circumcised you the eighth day and offered you a life to God? Godly old priest. And then, look, this businessman here in our city, Jehovah requires a lamb. These businessmen are merchandise men. They sell mercantile. So they don't have, they don't have raised lambs. So the priest made a way that they could clear their soul according to the word of God. And he built little cages out there in the courts. And they brought the man who sold the, the lambs in here and let these men who wants to offer a sin offering for their soul the requirement of Jehovah. When they go up to buy this lamb, then what did this guy do when he got up there? He turned over the money tables and beat them out of there. Trying to keep a man from getting his soul right with God. And what did he say about that godly old priest of yours? They were a bunch of snakes and of the devil. Talk about fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> They had him beat the long ways. But what is the evidence of a believer? That we will believe the identified word of the hour. It's always been that way. The people get scrupled up in all kinds of traditions and religions and denominations and educations and so forth. But God comes along with his word and confirms it for the hour. Amen. That's the evidence. Look upon him and see, he said, if I don't do the works of my father, believe me not. Search the scriptures in them, you think you've got eternal life, they testify who I am. And if I don't do what the scripture says that I shall do, then don't believe me. See, and still they didn't know, after walking with him and here, identifying himself back after the resurrection and showing that, that it was him by the scriptures. Still, you know today, after the Jesus has raised from the dead, and has appeared to the people in the last days when they said years ago, when the Pentecostal group first started, there was no such a thing as that. It's the fastest growing church in the world. The Pentecostal. It's 
It's a message they've had now for 50 years. They said it couldn't be done, but it was done anyhow. They said there was no such a thing as the Holy Ghost. The people went on and received it just the same. Amen. God promised he'd pour out his spirit. How are you going to stop it when he promised he'd do it? Amen. They said nobody will believe it, but they did believe it. God said on these stones right, children of Abraham, that obeyed his word. They went right on to become the mightiest church there is on the land. Our Sunday visitor, the Catholic visitor, said not long ago that the Pentecostal church was the fastest growing church of all the organizations. Said their church witnessed a million conversions in last year, and the Pentecostal had a million five hundred thousand last year. And that don't include mine, Roberts, and them other meetings like that. See, it's just those who are brought in as, as membership. Some of them we don't know where they go to in these evangelistic meetings. But they ran you a million five hundred thousand converts in a year. Witness for the Catholic Church. See, they said it could be done, and now the Presbyterians, Methodists, and Baptists are seeking for it. And the Pentecostals are blind enough not to see the hour. Don't you know what that seventh watch, when the sleeping virgin said, Come give us some of your oil? And when he, they said, We just got enough for ourselves. And while they were trying to buy it, the bridegroom come and they went in. There we are. See, and fools, could he say again, slow of heart, to believe all the scripture says about it this day? To believe that this lady will see a church age, that he's put outside the church and because we're rich, have needed nothing? Wow, well, we're one of the richest organizations in the world. The Pentecostal move. Oh my, we used to be down in the alley, but brother, she's out on the front street now, the best churches and best seminaries, and we're building one, a $50 million one right here now. See? And all kinds of great things, rich, but then you forget the promise. You start towards tradition. And that's the reason when it comes to identifying himself, the people so cold and numb with their education and philosophy and things, they've turned the, tra- the commandments of God into a tradition. Amen. You stand and speak to him in this, that don't go at all. It returns. I've become very highly polished. If some great bishop or somebody bring in something like that, well, they, they would receive it. But you see, it never did come that way. If some organization would all go for it, it would be fine. But he never did do that. He never did. If he had come with campuses and campuses and said, Now, I am the Messiah. I'm the one supposed to come. Now, see, they'd say, Oh, great Holy Father, you are the Messiah. But see, that don't identify the Messiah is... His religious rights. That didn't make him a sign. It was a sign the Bible said would make him a sign. That's what it is again today. Not our denominations, not our creeds, but what thus saith the Lord is. Now, notice. Same now, we get ourselves the same way. Still we believe. Creeds, denomination, worldly, education, so forth. Well, you know, a lot of our churches have begun to accept the idea that before a missionary could go on the field, it, they have to have a psychic test by a psychiatrist to see if their IQ is high enough to be a missionary. Yeah. And that's contrary to the scripture. The Bible said that Peter was an ignorant and unlearned man. Amen. He couldn't even sign his own name. But it pleased God to give him the keys to the kingdom. Amen. Because he's seen the Messiah, known his evidence, and fell at his feet and recognized him as the Messiah. He believed the word, and thou art Peter. I say unto thee, thou art Peter. And upon this rock I'll build my church, not upon Peter, not upon Jesus, but upon his spiritual revelation of who he was. Yeah. Same thing he did Abel. Abel, by faith, offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than that obtained. Both boys offered. Both boys prayed. Both boys built an altar. Both boys worshiped the same God. See? One was accepted, the other turned down because by revelation, Abel saw it wasn't fruits or apples that brought us out of the garden of Eden. It was blood. And he offered blood and God received it. And look at, look at up in Moab, the great organization, same God. There come Balaam, the bishop out. Built seven altars just like Israel had down there. Put seven green sacrifices, bullocks, and seven rams. Speaking of the coming of Christ. Fundamental, they were both right. But look down here at this little renegade bunch folk around. Won't even pass to the ground. Which Christ is afraid to have some kind of revival up there. So they wouldn't let him go through. On the road to the promised land too. And he wouldn't let his brother Israel pass through. Right. 
In what Balaam failed to see was that smitten rock and that brass serpent, the shout of the king in the camp. They failed to see that identification of God among them. Both of them had prophets, Balaam up there and Moses down here. But a Moses was identified with the word. That's the difference. Both great preachers, but this man was identified with the word. He wasn't mighty of a nation as that was, but he was identified with the word and had the evidence of it. Amen. Amen. That's a real believing crew. Christ with us. Christ in us. A little while the world seeth me no more, yet ye shall see me, for I will be with you even in you to the end of the world. Notice. Now remember, quickly, they failed to see it. Oh, they didn't understand it. How they could be. And the promised word was for their age. He was that promise fulfilled. And yet they feel to say it. A sure sign of a true prophet. Notice what he done. And they, I noticed, they went uh, quickly. He said, you being a stranger and don't know that Jesus of Nazareth, a prophet, indeed mighty before God and people. We believe and know he was a prophet. Watch him. As soon as they identified him, he kept asking, what were these things that went on? What, what taking place? He said, Jesus of Nazareth, a prophet, mighty before God and man. And we believe that he would be the one who would bring deliverance to Israel. And as soon as they acknowledged him as a prophet, watch, immediately he went to the word. A, a real sign of a true prophet. A real prophet goes to the word always because the word of the Lord comes to the prophet. Amen. See, and he goes to it. And watch what he done. They have told him that they believed him to be a prophet. Now it's behooving becoming a prophet to identify himself with the word. Yes. Amen. Because the word always comes to the prophet. Amen. Old Dr. Davis is sitting here though, which I don't know where there is or not. I think he's down here in Florida somewhere, they told me. Dr. Davis, if you're here, he was the one ordained in the Missionary Baptist Church. We used to argue on the scripture. And he said that John the Baptist baptized Jesus first, or Jesus baptized John first, because John had never been baptized. And he's preaching baptism, and nobody's worthy to baptize him, so Jesus baptized John. He said, when he suffered him. Well, I couldn't get that straight in my mind how he did it. I couldn't make the scripture. One day when I was alone and the angel of the Lord was present, he revealed it to me. See, now look, Jesus was the word. John was the prophet. There's two of the greatest on earth, God and his prophet, and the word was God. And it's always becoming to the word to come to the prophet. Amen. And John was the prophet. And here comes the word walking right out in the water to the prophet. The word comes to the prophet in the water. Amen. I feel religious. <laughs> the word absolutely comes to the prophet. And here he was the word in living form. And here was the prophet standing in the water. And the word come to the prophet. I see their eyes as they meet one another. John looked up, he saw the heavens open, that dove coming down like a fire, wings coming up, on a voice coming from his head, this is my beloved son, in whom I'm pleased to dwell. When John looked, he saw that light over him, whatever it was, first when he's walking to the bank, he said, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He was so perfectly concerned, real belief, he said, there's one sitting among you whose shoes I'm not willing to bear, he'll baptize you in the Holy Ghost and Father. He knew he had to come in his days because he was a forerunner. He said, there's one among you now who you don't know. But I don't know him one of these days when I see that sign identifying. Then Jesus walked out one day and he said, there's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Jesus walked the word right out to the prophet of the water. John looked up at him in humility and said, I have need to be baptized of thee. Why comest thou unto me? Watch this now. The word and the prophet together. See, the prophet will have to know the word because the word is manifested to the prophet. Now, here was his prophecy fulfilled. He would introduce the Messiah. And here's the prophet and the word together. And he said, I have need to be baptized of thee, and why comest thou to me? Jesus looked him out in the face and said, Suffer that to be so. For thus it is becoming to us, behooving, becoming, to us to fulfill all righteousness. 
And when he baptized him, look, what was it? Jesus said as a prophet, you know that I am the sacrifice. And the sacrifice has to be washed before it's presented. Amen. 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 Come to the prophet. Always. And he suffered. He said, that's exactly right. It's becoming to us that we fulfill all righteousness. I am the sacrifice. I must be washed. That's right. You have given me that Seed land. 
And that priest and everything over there, they had a, they had an education, a, a conception. Did to begin with? He said so. But this little woman, her life is all marred. Right down here is a little bit of light, but way down in there was a seed waiting. See, as sure as the light can strike a seed that's germinized, it'll live. So here she comes up. Maybe she's late with her work. She couldn't come up with the rest of women anyhow. She maybe a pretty little lady packed her water bottle on her shoulder and went up there and sort of let it down to the well. And she heard this man say, bring me a drink. He went talking to her. And he said, go get your husband and come here. Now see, down she knew that that was a sign of the Messiah. She said to him, I have no husband. He said, that's right. You've had five and the one you have now is not your husband. She said, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. We haven't had a prophet for hundreds of years. I perceive that you are a prophet. Now we know that we're looking for the Christ, the anointed Messiah. And when he comes, that's just exactly what he'll be. Now look, he said, I'm he that speaks with you. Right into the city she went. She had no right to do that. According to your laws, a woman of that type, a man would listen to her, would try to stop her, like a house on fall on a windy day. Here she went. She said, come see a man who told me the things I've done. Isn't this a Messiah? Now remember, Jesus never repeated it. He never done one time in there, but they said the whole city believed on him because of the woman's testimony. Think of it. Oh, my. When she knew the promise, what the Messiah would be, and when she seen that promise fulfilled, it opened her eyes. See, the big clothes was sin. But when that promise, she said, that's the Messiah who that when he comes. He said, I'm he. Her eyes were open. She has eternal life because her eyes was open. Peter's eyes was open. Nathaniel, as we talked about last night. What has it done to our eyes in these days? A promise fulfilled. Has it opened our eyes? We see St. John 14, 12, Hebrews 13, 8, uh, St. John 14, 9. Have we seen Luke uh, uh, 17, 27, 28? All these scriptures as promised Malachi 4. All of them fulfilled right here before us. What has it done to our eyes? If it doesn't open them, It'll blind them eternally. It opens some, blinds the others. See, it opens them to it. These last days, what he's promised to do this, why he said he would do it, restore back the faith of old Pentecostal people, professors of God's Holy Spirit. May the God of heaven over open your eyes from tradition to the living God of a promise of the Bible that we claim to believe. And what he said he would be Abraham's royal seed. Called out in the last days, and Jehovah would come down among the flesh of his people and do exactly like he did in the days of Sodom. Did you hear the news tonight? How that in this very state, I forget how many hundred teachers, school teachers, were proven to be homosexuals. Tonight's news. Oh, it's rotten to the core. Everything. The government, they claim in the government officials is nearly 40% of them proved homosexuals. My office is piled with letters, mother crying, their, their boys living with boys. And, and it's just the day we're living in. Everything. Nations are breaking. Israel's awakening. She's in her homeland. The fig tree's putting forth its buds. Oh, the church is asleep in Lady Osea. And Jesus trying to get some cooperation. Yet, with all the things that the scripture says, the church snoozes right on away in a bed of worldliness. Oh, church, if you can't understand the word, just open your heart and see if he don't identify himself like he did then. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us bow our heads in the morning. Heavenly Father, sometimes maybe I, I don't mean to be rational with the people. I don't mean to be rough, but Lord, as the expression of the carpenter, how can you make the boards stay on there unless you clinch the nail? So I pray, God, that they'll understand that it's, it's through Christian love that, that we try to drive this down. It might be the visitation of some people here for the last time that they'll ever be permitted. It might be the last time that we'll ever meet together. 
this city may never have another revival like it. Yet sometime they'll be going on having revival, they claim, and the church is done gone. Done sealed away. The doors. Noah was in the ark, and the door closed behind him seven days before the rain ever come, but nobody could enter the ark. The world went by on just the same. And someday it might be the same thing. They might wake up to what Jesus said when the disciples said, Why does the scribe say that Elias must first come? Jesus said, He's already come when you didn't know it. So could it be that coming and catch away. One of these days you'll get into the tribulation. You say, I thought the bride was going, the church going into the tribulation. Sure, the church going into the tribulation, but not the bride. Why well, is this supposed to be first? And then the word might be, she's already gone. They'll be going on ahead in church just the same. God, let the people tonight, though they don't understand the scriptures, it may be written to them. But just let each one say, then Lord Jesus, you who are present, come in and abide with me. I, I have need. Now read in the Bible where a woman touched your garment and you turned around and told her what her trouble was and said that her faith saved her. And I read in the Bible this week that you are now a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities, and you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now come into my heart, Lord, and reveal to me, though I've walked and I've loved you, but I really have never seen it done, so I pray, God, that you'll do it for me tonight. Grant that, people, Father, and may our eyes be open all over the church, and we'll see that lovely, sweet, resurrected Lord Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. Granted, may our eyes be open for the kingdom of God's sake. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. I will let you out of time. I wouldn't have time to call a prayer out of here. Although we're thinking about prayer calls. You don't need to be up here. God's just as great out there as he's in. You mean he's on the prison? Certainly is. He's on the prison because he's on the mission. Now he isn't on the back of the end because he could be on the mission, he knows all things, so therefore he is everywhere of being on the mission. It's like the word predestiny, it's a bad word. I used it even to go and talk myself because I felt the spirit move back. Many people don't believe in predestination. Predestination is a bad word, it's really foreknowledge. God knows before who will and who won't, so therefore he can predestinate by his foreknowledge. That's the reason he knows who will and who won't. He don't, he, he don't really diminish and perish, but he knows who will perish. If he wasn't, then he wasn't God. He has to be omnipotent. It's the same as, as omnipresent. See? Omnipotent, 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 infinite. Infinite. If he isn't, he isn't God. So he knows all things. Therefore, he can tell the end from the beginning. Because he is the Word. Now, I'm a total stranger. I don't see a person here. I hope, unless it's this boy right here. If I know this boy, if he used to have a big beard or something that you wore a long time ago, I kind of tell you about it. And I think that's what he's all sitting on the front. Outside of that, I don't see a person that I know. I can't see a one out there. Uh, I just have to look at the boy sitting there weeping a few months ago and wiping his eyes out. I thought, that looks like that scene young girl I had on Friday evening one time. And uh, I don't know where he came from. I just recognize his face. I have But that's the only person that I know in here now. All right? Now, when you just open your heart like this, turn to the other knee of God, raise up your hand, say, I'm needy, I'm needy. I don't care who you are, just raise up your hand. Now, I saw Now, may the God of heaven, who raised up his son, Jesus Christ, who by his written word, I am trying by a divine gift to identify his presence before these people for their glory, may he send the Holy Spirit on me as by this gift. I let myself be. To be uh, to identify Jesus Christ in the human flesh as God was identified in human flesh in the days of Son. Full finish work. May he grant in Jesus Christ's name. I reverently everybody. I just begin to pray in your heart. Lord Jesus, I'm going to open my heart and come in. And let me close off all my unbelief on the outside. Then make it known to me. The thing that you did before your crucifixion, then I'll know you've raised from the dead. Now, I can't catch it every one of you. That's exactly right. But somebody, no doubt, it will catch it. And if you caught one, it's like that woman out there, the rest of the uh, people that Sakar didn't have to have it done to them, they believed it. 
There's somebody, just one woman, one man, one boy, one child, whoever it is, to be identified that way. If them people back there would have never seen you, we can talk into it. Surely we ought to be. Is that my brother? Does that sound sense to you all? Sure. It's hard when you're preaching like that. And it comes to these two different gifts. One's speaking, the other's singing. And you just believe in all your stuff. Own that. With half faith in God. Let's start looking on the side of the picture. Somebody just look at you. You have to stand right here. All the time you believe. Don't press that. See you jump over the top of it. It's so, it's so I just pour it out of you. Just yes, remind yourself and say, well, sure, that's the word, and I believe it. That little old fellow said, that doesn't know me, but I know Jesus, he's told the truth about the word, and I believe it. Just do it like that. Say, I'm sick of need, and I have need. I can't give you this one need, but it only identify. No wonder you people can be suspicious. You only, you only see this one touch up here. It tells what will happen, who will, where God's, and all about it. And never one time, it's never one time failed in the tens of thousands of times around the world. How many has fallen and knows that the truth raised up their hands? Well, my. Never, it can't be enough of God being that accurate. Because it's his promise, it never can fail. Now, he don't, that don't mean it. Because he's already done that. He just identified it. He's here to keep that promise. Now, if he's kept that promise, he keeps the healing promise. Is that my brothers? He keeps the healing promise and he keeps that promise. It's a more sure sign. What if somebody was sharing a wheelchair and I picked them up? It could be a good case of psychology or little something to make that person walk. But if they can turn the cross in the heart, that's one thing sure. You know what you've done, who you are, and all about you. That takes God alone to be perfect each time. Here, I, I, wish, I wish I could explain this, and don't be trying to explain it. You can't do it. But now, if I can say this word, something inside of me has changed to another dimension. I'm looking right at that pillar of fire that followed Israel through the wilderness. How many of you ever seen the picture of this year? I'm looking right at you. Looking right straight at it. Amber, kind of yellowish looking green. Turning around, I see a woman moving up, she's sitting right there to, looking right at me, and she's sitting right down here looking at me, and she's suffering, she's praying for a disease that she has, it's a blood disease, it's a diabetes. Right. Right. Both of you, you two women, both of you stay there together, we have diabetes, raise your hand. Amen. Now, what is that? You were thinking about it, well, trying to open your heart. I see you just come right in and done uh, just exactly the way you down the fourth crucifixion. Now you don't know me either. You know what I mean? If that's right, raise up your hands. If you don't know me, or if you don't know me, then it had to be him. Well, I don't know him. It had to be him. If you just believe it with all your heart, God will make it manifest. You have to believe it. Here. This man just said something to somebody. Except now you're looking at it. Kind of headset on a white shirt. We're strangers to one another, sir. Is that right? You're sitting right by you know it. No, it's behind you, sir. No, it's behind you. So a man with a white shirt. Just hold your place, you, you believe. Uh, man with a white shirt. If God lets you, you have to look around. If God will tell you what's your trouble, you believe he'll heal you? You got heart trouble. But that's right where you have your hand. Right? You said you're healed. Now there's a man right here raising his hand somewhere around right here in this book. You. You believe he'd be God's servant, his prophet? You do? You're also suffering with a heart trouble. You have arthritis also. That's your wife sitting next to you. And she suffers with arthritis. And she also is having dizzy spells. But that's right, raise up your hand. That's right. You believe I'm telling you who you are? Mr. Miss Jones, you can play the game. I'm the game. Praise the Lord. Believe with all your heart, I'm just believing. Have faith in God, no doubt, just believe. Here says a man coming gray head sitting right here at the end. Holds his hair over sideways. There's that light standing on the ice cream, you wear it hair. You believe me to be God's prophet, his servant? You believe that hate keeper's going to leave you, you'll be alright if you raise up your hand. 
I'm told to pray. That's what you pray. Next man to your name of his name too because he believed. But what he he has a God, he be good as God offered to us. That's right. That's right. Wave your hands, sir. That's right. Do you believe? The only thing you have to do is have faith. This little lady said, Have your hand. Do you believe, lady? Believe with all your heart? Do mm-hmm. you believe that that stomach fell was going to leave you? You do? You got a burden on your heart, haven't you? That's for your God. She isn't here. You believe I can't where she is at? She is in California. She's got a dark shadow. She's going to die if something isn't done now because she's shattered with the cancer. But that's why I raise up your hand. You believe I can tell you who you are for the help of God? Jesus told Simon who he was. Is that right? This is Adam. That's right, baby. Right? Right? A little missionary lady is sitting there next to you. She's kind of weird about some things, too. That's right. Pray for a friend all one time yourself. Is that right? And you're missionary. Believe with all your heart. I don't know. You've never seen it. That's true. The lady said, behind you, pretty hairy stomach, so you believe that God will make fun of that. You can have that also. You believe with all your heart? Feel the 
presence of your great being, that great august feeling of, of the deity of God moving around among us, no wonder of all. It blinds the eyes of the unbeliever who doesn't believe the word. And how it opens the eyes of those who will believe. Now you open the eyes of these people by revealing yourself to them. Now, Lord, open the hearts of these people and make your abode with them. They're yours. I give them to you. They're trophies of your word. Your word has called them. And your word has identified to them. And now they identify themselves by standing up to give witness that they want you to forgive their sins. You said, he that comes to me, I will no eyes cast out. And the heavens and earth are passed away, but your word will not fail. They are yours, Lord. They belong to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I claim every one of them. In your name shall be praised, Lord. May they be included in the bride. Go in the resurrection. And if I never give this speak to them of all the earth, or shake their hands for the privilege of baptizing them into Christian baptism, May God on that day when it's all over and we sit down at the wedding supper, may I have the preachers look across the table and they say, oh, what was the name of Tampa, Florida that night, Brother Brandon, that I stood? And I said, now here he is. See, he's the same. Grant me, Lord, keep them for thy grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask that. Amen. And you may be seated. Just a few minutes for your call or you come up here and give identification to your testimony. Now, you that stood to your feet, you just stood up while the prayer was going on. Did you witness something in other that you have done the right thing and you believe that he is the Son of God and you do now accept him as your personal Savior? Raise up your hand and say, I do now accept him. God bless you, Mr. Knight, 100%. I have now accepted him as my Savior. Now your next step is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You have a room for that, don't you know? A room for that. Here it is. They'll advise you to it in a minute. Now to finish the prayer. That stop. I don't you move around. See, every time you move, that interrupts the spirit. Of God. See, I know you're a young lady. You lay your hands over on each other. Let just lay your hands over one another and pray for one another. Now that's it. I said, each one of these believers. Always, don't you feel good? Say, Amen. Don't you feel like now that you're right in the presence of God? That sweet, humble feeling. May our souls never be so carried away with the world and things. And that lovely, sweet feeling of our great Messiah, Jesus Christ, right among us now in the form of the Holy Spirit. The world will run up about it, but we know him. We see him. We see him identified. Remember, in the days of Abraham, that, that God that was in human flesh, he never did go down there and saw him. His two preachers went out there, but not him. He stayed with the elected, called out church. That's what his message was doing. Isn't it wonderful that he comes to us today? We have seen ourselves identified as a royal seed of Abraham, who, with his back turned to the tent, told what Sarah was thinking. Same thing comes right here tonight, does the same thing in human flesh. Jesus said it would happen the days that when the Son of Man was revealed. Now he said this next thing These signs shall follow them and believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Now, with your hands together, your hearts together, let's bow our heads and I pray for the sick. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we bring to you this waiting audience. And in this divine presence, O oh God, no one of those disciples, Cleopas and his friend, it took them all day to get over to Emmaus, but a few moments they were back. They were with the rest of the disciples. They didn't come to argue their religious standpoints. But they come because they had seen him. They had been, they had met him. They, they, they heard him preach. And they seen him identify himself that he was the risen Christ. You are the word. The word has been preached. The word has been made manifest. The, the word deserves the thoughts that's in the heart. It says so. And we are sure as they are, Lord. As sure as they were, we see the sign of the resurrection and we know it's an identification of you revealing yourself as your church and the word has to be one because husband and wife is one. The bride and the word become one. Oh God, when we see it among us, how we rejoice in it. 
is seeing the same attributes, the same picture being taken scientifically. The angel of the Lord that brought Israel out of Egypt and took them to the promised land, was made flesh and dwelt among us, ascended up on high. He said, I come from God and I go to God. A few months later, here he was on the road to Damascus with Saul, and struck him down, and Saul, seeing that same pillar of fire, said, Lord, who are you? And he said, I'm Jesus. It's hard for you to kick against the bricks. Oh, Lord, and see, 2,000 years later, here he is, scientifically proven, and proven by faith in the church, and doing the same thing he did to identify the scriptures exactly for this day. We don't disbelieve anymore, Lord. We believe. Help our unbelief. May our hearts be turned loose. May sickness lose its power. These believers lose hands of one another. The prayer of faith is being made right now, and it shall save the sick. Satan, turn this audience loose. In the name of Jesus Christ, let them go that they might be free from sickness and diseases for the glory of God. I just keep yourself shut in. Just start praying. Pray in your own way. Lay your hands up on one another. Just keep your hands. Say, Lord God, in your way. Now I pray for you. Now you pray for one another. Keep your hands on your neighbor over there and say, Lord, heal this woman. Heal this man. I believe that I'm saving it for him. They're saving it for me. I believe what you're here. Well, I believe no one can not believe that. Believe it with all your heart. Lord God, make each one heal. Just pray right out of faith. May the Lord heal every one of you from the soul of your feet 